the persimmon. I had never heard of a persimmon before, but there was a sweet family who would make us dinner every Monday night. And she was Filipino and a great Filipino cook, and we had so many different delicious meals, but they had a persimmon tree in the backyard. And it, a persimmon is a type of fruit. Um, it's fleshy and very sweet. And so she would just make us persimmon bread and persimmon cakes and just lots of different things with persimmons in it. And I'd never heard of it before, so... The persimmon is something everyone should try out now. I'm a firm believer. <laughs> there are so many favorite foods from California. There is tri-tip. It's a special cut of beef that kind of originated in California and it's delicious and very tender. So there's lots of different tri-tip sandwiches and avocados and apples and oranges and just all the fresh citrus fruits. I think one of the things that stands out for the valley is the almonds or the almonds as sometimes the workers will say there's just fields and fields of almond trees and so they have a lot of just fresh almonds that you can buy and they're really really good. I think the craziest experience uh, the one that first comes to mind is the worst sunburn of my entire mission. We were helping set up for a wedding and everyone kept saying you know are you sisters putting on sunblock are you you know making sure you're taking care of yourself. We're like, oh, we're fine, we're fine. We felt really good. And I was tying bows for like two hours on like a, what do they call it? Like a bench over a river. It was, it was a weird situation, um, but just bows everywhere. And I got back to the apartment that night to get changed to go to the wedding. Um, and my arms were just the deepest red that they had ever been. And it was miserable for about two weeks after that. <laughs> so I just kind of learned my lesson about sunblock. I think the greatest life lesson that I learned is that love is what matters in the end. There are a lot of rules as a missionary. <laughs> There's a lot of lessons to learn. There's a lot of ways that you could confine yourself in a box if you're not careful. And I think I kind of was having a bad habit of confining myself into a missionary box, so to say. But the minute that I just opened my heart and was vulnerable and tried to have charity, then that's when I saw lives change and my own life change. And so I think now that I've been home from my mission for a little while and as I've started a job and I've lived my life, that when you love others and when you have charity and are willing to keep your heart and mind open to the will of the Lord, then that's when things are going to happen and you're going to progress. So I think the greatest thing that my mission taught me how to do was to one, have confidence and to two, to act out plans in confidence. I'm not a very organized person. I'm messy. I like to kind of just go with the flow. I don't like charts or keeping lists of things, but missionary work is great for planning. So I think I learned how to set goals and make plans and then to be confident in acting out those plans. So really the heat is pretty much the craziest that weather ever got because California is beautiful, especially in the valley, very mild climate um, until you hit pretty much July and August and then the temperatures can rise up to like 117 I think was the hottest that it got. So I remember my mission president's wife calling and saying you're not allowed to fast and elders you can't ride bikes and you need to wear I, um, sunglasses when you go walking because you don't want to stare at the pavement and fry your eyeballs out. So there are a lot of interesting things that we would have to do to protect ourselves from the heat because the California Fresno Mission, a lot of walking, a lot of biking, not a lot of relief from the sun. So that was the craziest, just that darn heat. <laughs> So my stepfather passed away nine months into my mission. And so I think when you're going through emotional trauma, <laughs> you kind of have a lot of different experiences. You go from shock and, oh, I'm great. I can just function to being a zombie and inconsolable. And so dealing with all those different emotions and trying to figure out how to be a new missionary with all of these things happening at home was a really big transition. And I think that wasn't unique to me. There are a lot of people who are worried about their families at home and with what happens at home. And I think the thing that helped me the most was something that my mission president told me and would be my advice for anyone who's dealing with a similar situation. Um, 
my mission president was a rugby coach. <laughs> so he had a lot of great sports analogies, but he told me, you know, Sister Ingram, you know the final score. You know, you know that it's going to be a winning score. And so you're at halftime right now and things seem really dismal. And you're like, maybe I'm not going to win this, but act like you know the final score. And so that was able to help me put my trials and my losses into perspective that I could move forward and I could rely on Christ in moving forward and say, hey, this is really hard right now, but in the eternal perspective, there's a purpose and there's a reason. And it gave me some clarity going through that experience. I think my advice to a return missionary would be to not be too hard on yourself. Because I know that when I got home, I experienced kind of this wrestle within myself of, I still want to be a missionary, but I also really want being a missionary to be over. <laughs> I don't want to be a missionary anymore, but I want to be a missionary. And I, I had a really hard time reconciling those two strong desires. And I think a lot of missionaries are hard on themselves because they're like, oh, I'm not as good at my scripture study or praying or in sharing the gospel. And I, so, so I think just being easy on yourself and being patient with yourself as you're adjusting now to your new missionary calling of being a missionary as just a member and as a disciple of Christ. So I went on an exchange once to the Yosemite National Park. Uh, there are two little branches up there and that was one of the craziest experiences on my mission because you are just driving through mountain ranges back and forth from these two little tiny towns Oakhurst and Coarsegold and I had a sister on the exchange with me that was her area but she was from Aruba so she didn't have a driver's license and so it was pitch black and there were just literally driving up and down and around a curvy mountain and I had never experienced that before so having to drive through all of those mountain passes and those mountain ranges was terrifying but an adventure and it was really beautiful um, getting to like be up there in that area it's just you're in the middle of a mountain and in a forest and the views were stunning. <laughs> The scripture study that stands out most to me was one day after my stepfather had passed. I was just feeling like really ineffective. I was like, I don't know if I should still be here. I don't know if I'm working the best and if that's what's best for me and what's best for my investigators. And there's a scripture, I believe it's Helaman 3 or Helaman 10, but it's where Nephi is kind of walking around. He's cried repentance to everybody and no one's listened and he's feeling really dejected. But the scripture talks about how Nephi was told from the Lord that he had done the Lord's will and he had submitted his will and all things to the Lord and that he would be blessed forever because of it. And I felt that so many times on my mission that I had been so worked up and I was so selfishly worried about like me and my service and like am I doing a good job and really it just came down to like are you doing your best and are you trying to follow the Lord and if you are then you'll be blessed forever and the Lord will help you and be with you and that was kind of a novel concept it's like okay I can do this and the Lord is by my side.